Of course, I know what you came to see. Every art critic in the country has been on my neck for the past 24 hours. It's a real find. A genuine, unlisted old master. And I picked it up for $50,000. <laughs> it's a shame to excite the envy of an old friend, but uh, here goes. Well, what do you think of that? What's the matter with you? Why are you looking at me like that? Are you, are you crazy? What are you doing with that? Give it away! Put it down! Not at all. You, uh, you evidently don't care much for the Neil Broderick novels. I hate them. So do I. You've no idea how tired they make me. I can't understand how an intelligent adult public can accept such rubbish. You know, I've often wondered that. May I sit there? Thank you. My name is Neil Broderick. You mean you are the author of this? This, uh, this rubbish? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, that's all right. You know it's rubbish, and I know it's rubbish. Let's try to keep the secret between us. Oh, I didn't mean that. I think your books are excellent. As a substitute for sleeping powder? Hmm? Oh, but I'm writing one now that'll keep you awake. Here's the spring announcement. See? That's the death sign of the black ace. Anytime anybody gets one of those things, it's curtains. But there is a, a real black ace, isn't there? Well, I'll say there is. Only yesterday, he murdered old Asa Marsden, the millionaire, and got away with a $50,000 painting. Oh. Well, a peculiar study for crime psychologists, this fellow. He seems to get a kick out of telling his victims they're going to die by sending them a black ace beforehand. And you know what's got him licked? He's never failed on a threat. How dreadful. Mm. Why did he take such chances? I mean, sending the announcement. Oh, that's a big point in my book. You see, this man is an egomaniac. And he derives a strange pleasure out of announcing his crimes beforehand and then, then laughing at the police. But, uh, aren't you afraid to write about such a desperate person? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, I'm on my way to Chicago now to get some more dope on him for my book. From the Black Ace himself? Oh, no, indeed. From a rich old chap named Thornton Drake. Ever hear of him? Yes. What's he got to do with it? Well, he spent a lot of money trying to capture this egg. Gosh, if I can only get an interview with him, I'll be set. Of course you will. Well, it's going to be kind of tough. You see, he's got an old billy goat of a secretary named Austin Winters. Billy goat? Yes, you know, a little, little nuts. You mean insane? Oh, absolutely. Insanity's a dreadful thing. Terrible. Uh, you suppose it runs in families? Always. Never fails. I've made a study of it. Now, you take a chap like this old man Winters. If you line his relatives up, you'd have enough nuts to hold a four together. Now it's my turn. Your turn? For what? Look at a red face. Austin Winters is my father. Martha met him on the train. His name is Broderick, and he says he's a novelist. Do you wish to see him? Can't you see I'm busy, Winters? He claims to have a lot of information about the Black Ace. In fact, he's writing a book about him. Oh, why didn't you say so in the first place? 
You know I'll see anyone who has information about that, that infernal scoundrel. Well, don't stand there. Bring him in. Well, up. Do you still think my father's such an old billy goat? Of <laughs> course not. I'm more interested in what your father's going to think of me. Oh, he rarely likes anyone until he's known them a long time. Now, that's where your father and I differ. All I have to do is to see a person once. Sold. Mr. Drake will see you now. Don't go away. Books about crime, eh? Yes, sir. Hmm, that's interesting. What do you know about crime? Crime doesn't pay. You didn't write that. <laughs> <laughs> that goes there. Hmm. Um, uh, my secretary, Mr. Winters, tells me you're writing a book about the Black Ace. That's right. And of course, you, you know a lot about him. Yes, quite a lot. What, what has been the source of your information? Well, partly from the newspapers and partly from police records. And I've been doing a little private investigating on my own. I've come to you, Mr. Drake, because I feel we can help each other. Possibly, Mr. Broderick. But first, I'd like to know about your book. Whether it's one of these silly novels making a hero out of him, or whether you're really showing him up as the public menace he is. I want to see this murderer get everything that's coming to him. Mm, young man, if you really mean that, you can count on me for all I've got. That scoundrel has been responsible for the murder of my oldest friend. And I shan't be content till I see him hang. You certainly realize that when Mr. Drake took up this fight against the Black Ace, there were certain perils to be guarded against. We don't know this man, Broderick. Oh, Dad, you're suspicious of everybody. Martha, I have served Mr. Drake for a long time. He's been my friend and yours, and it's my duty to protect him. This young man's idea is excellent, Winters. We'll furnish him with what information we have. Uh, do you think that would be prudent? Of course, such a book will cause widespread interest and vigilance. Mr. Broderick, after all, is a stranger. I think we should proceed with more caution. Why, Dad? Winters, you're getting to be a fussy old woman. We'll furnish Mr. Broderick the information we have. Just as you say, Mr. Drake. I, uh, you'll excuse me. I'm sorry, my dear, but this black ace situation seems to be getting your father down a bit. <laughs> it's really I who should be doing the worrying. <laughs> well, let's have a drink. I think that's a splendid idea. Yeah. Randolph, three, four, six, eight. Here's your new book. Thanks. Hope this one will keep you awake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mmm, that's very excellent wine, Mr. Drake. Yes, I get it from my plantation in Louisiana. Where they get it is nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Quite an impressive pamphlet. Yes. Yes, my publishers are live wires. When they get a hot idea, they believe in Ballyhoo. Ballyhoo? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Tomorrow night. 
This is not unexpected. What are you going to do? It means death. You told me that on the train. May I, may I ask where this puzzle came from? A man delivered it this morning. The same man who always delivers them? No, it was a different one. Well, I, I seem to have arrived in the thick of things. Yes, you certainly have. Listen, there's someone on the terrace. Did you hear that? Put up your hand. Is that gun loaded? Who are you? What are you doing here? Clancy, headquarters. Dugan, same address. Chief got a mysterious call saying there was trouble at the Drake house. Call? Who are you? Thornton Drake. Oh. What's up, Mr. Drake? You, of course, know of the Black Ace. Oh, sure. We just missed catching him about six months ago. Sure, we caught one of his air wiggers. It was like this. I'm wise this guy blots out a boogie for stolen. So I'm crowding him with the heater, but he don't belch. I know he's an alky stiff, so I start feeding him the dynamite when Clancy walks in with this guy's twist. She's all full of happy dust and leaping. She calls for a blizzard, so we let her have it, friggin' on the beef, see? Well, she don't open up on the black ace, but she spills enough on this ear wicker to get him fried in New York last September. What's he talking about? How many times have I got to tell you? These guys don't understand them technical terms. What he's trying to say is this. He's busting one of the Black Ace's spies who dropped a dinge. He's sweating the guy with a rod, but it's no dice. So he remembers that the guy's a stew, and he starts giving him a jolt now and then. Sit down. Sit down, sit down. Just then I breezes in with the guy's maul. She's a snowbird. So I gives her a sniff of gold dust, and she opens up on the guy. Last September, they gave him the hot squat. That's what he's trying to tell you. Uh, you were a little vague. Who's a vague? Gentlemen, Mr. Drake has received a threat of death from the Black Ace. No kidding. Boy, what a case. And with usual bravado, he's set the hour at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. What time is it now? Quiet. Mr. Drake, this Black Ace is a tough bird. Yes, yes, we know that, Mr. Clancy. Well, what are you going to do? Just stand there and let me be killed? Can't we at least put up some resistance? Now, don't you worry, Mr. Drake. You'll get a reception, I'll guarantee it. You know, I'd like to meet this fella. And if you don't mind, I'll wait right here until 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Who's this guy? Mr. Neil Broderick, the novelist. Thank you. Oh. You know what the cheat was always saying? So cheesy la femme. I have it. Why not charter a cabin plane and take off for your Louisiana plantation? We could leave in the morning. At 7 o'clock tomorrow night, we'd be hundreds of miles away and thousands of feet up in the air. Why, the Black Ace and all gangdom couldn't reach you under such circumstances. Splendid, Martha. You get a nice present for that idea. A thousand dollars. Uh, we was gonna suggest that, too. Yes, you're coming with us, Mr. Jugan, and you, Mr. Clancy. You, too, Mr. Broderick. We can have a long, uninterrupted conversation about that, uh, that matter. Fine. That's wonderful. Well, I knew you'd think that. <laughs> Listen, Clancy, I ain't afraid of nothing, you know that. But when it comes to aeroplanes, it ain't so good. I ain't no bird. No. But an egg like you can be hatched. Hey, Clancy. How often do these things fall? Once. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Dugan, I bought this for you. Something to while away the hours.
Thanks. Well, how's the bestseller coming along? Oh, great. You know what happened last night? It's going to make a pip of the chapter. Collaboration or inspiration? Interruption. <laughs> Mr. Broderick, your fortune is engaging in the profession that offers excitement. Ah, but it doesn't. Just a grind. You know, to me, excitement is what makes the difference between real living and mere existing. My life's been filled with industrial problems. Here one month, England the next. Dry, uninteresting. But now the pursuit of the black ace provides the zest that makes life fascinating, colorful. I wish I had a hamburger with a nice slice of raw onion. We slipped a fast one over on the black ace. I ain't surprised. I think this calls for mutual congratulations, Mr. Clancy. Oh, easiest case I was ever on. Hey, Mr. Winters. Yes, Mr. Clancy? I'll just say to Mr. Drake. Mr. Oh, oh, who's this? 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 Sorry, but a light connection came loose. Oh, <laughs> you all right, Morton? <laughs> ah! Oh, Dad. Dad! Uh, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Fingerprints. Stand back, everybody. Dad, there's no sign of a weapon. There never is. How about are we from the plantation? Just a few minutes, sir. We'll land as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. Somebody on this plane killed Winter. And I'm going to find out who it is. We gotta get to the bottom of this thing. What's your name? Henderson. How long you been with that airport in Chicago? About a year and a half. Uh, yeah. We can check on that. Yeah. What I want to know is why you left the cockpit when you did. Come on now, loosen up. Why did you leave that cockpit and go to the back of the plane at seven o'clock? Come on, now. We'll get back to you later. Mr. Drake. How long was Mr. Winters with you? For the past decade. Huh? That means ten years. For doing what? Why, uh... How long have you known this Conan Doyle guy? About 24 hours. Oh. Now we're getting somewhere. How long have you known Miss Winters? Since yesterday afternoon. 
Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Roderick, you know something. Sorry, I can't return the compliment. Who are you? Unfortunately, Mrs. Quincy is a mute. A what? My housekeeper is dumb. Well, you're gonna find one today. I'm sure she knows nothing about it. After all, she wasn't in the plane when the murder was committed. He's right. You go on back to the kitchen. Wait there till we send for you. Who's this guy? That's the gardener, Pompey. He wasn't in the plane either, if that'll help you any. So, don't try to get away. This is all pretty terrible for you, Martha. You must take it bravely. Well, I guess we'll make an examination of the body. Just a sort of a general checkup. Wait a minute, Clancy. Nobody's going to make an examination until we get a coroner. Well, well, look who's talking. I mean it. Yeah, well, listen. Just take a flash at that and go on back to your typewriter. You seem to have forgotten, Mr. Clancy, that you're now in the state of Louisiana. That doesn't mean a thing here. How about me taking a poke at him? What? Go on. How far is the nearest town, Mr. Drake? Benville. About a mile and a half from here. Well, if you don't mind, I'll use your telephone and call the coroner. Yes, I think that is the usual procedure. The telephone's in the hall. Thanks. I should have let you took a poke at him. Hello, operator. Get me the coroner's office at Bando. Hurry, please. At the Drake house. Can you come at once? Thanks. The coroner will be here shortly. Good. If nobody objects, I'd like to put in a call to Chicago to my company. I'll have to report this and receive instructions. Go right ahead. Thank you. Long distance, please. What's that? Well, there goes your other pilot. He's taking it on the land. What? He took a powder on us. Fine pair of detectives you are. Why did you leave him there in the first place? Well, that other pilot said he had to stay there and watch the plane. Don't give it a thought, Mr. Drake. We'll get on the telephone and notify every landing field in the country. The minute he comes down, they'll nab him. Well, Mr. Drake. Your telephone. What about it? It's dead. Who's dead? My telephone! That pal of yours just beat it. Listen, you. I want to talk to you. So do I. Quiet. Every time you take a walk, something happens. It's the idea. Let's go in the other room, Martha. Anderson, 
You know something. I know why it's cracked. Why, I've told you everything I know. Oh, Neil, Neil, I'm frightened. Yes, yes, dear, I know. Now, come and sit down. Neil, if the black ace meant to kill Mr. Drake and accidentally killed father instead. Now, listen to me, Martha. Your father wasn't killed accidentally. He was killed deliberately and for a reason. See who it is. See who it is. We'll both see who it is. Well, what are you waiting for? Go ahead. got a corpse around here? Yeah, we got a corpse. I'd like to see it, please. Who are you? I'm the coroner. Oh. I'm Clancy. I'm Dogan. Well, I'm glad to meet up with you. What's the condition of the corpse? Dead. Where's the body? In there. Maybe you folks would rather stay in the other room while I'm making the examination. Yes, thank you. If you don't mind, I will. I've had about all I can stand this evening. Anyone touch the body? Nobody. Only Dogan and me and Drake and that guy Henderson and Broderick. Well, what do you say? You're right. He's dead. Where are you fellas from? Chicago. Well, what are you doing way down here? Oh, we're just down here. How'd you get down here? We flew down. You like to fly? Yeah, we're going back by train. Look, did you find that on him? Yeah. I'm thinking this should be read in the presence of the others. Let's go. Okay. I found this in the dead man's coat pocket. What, what is it? To be opened in the event of my death. What does that mean? Let me see that. Just a minute. Just a minute. I'll take charge of this. Well, then open it up and read it. Yes, come on, read it. Close those doors, Dugan, like a good fellow. Come on, come on. Austin Winters take this method of acquainting the world in the event of my death with the identity of the man known as the Black Ace. In all fairness, however, I must say that this knowledge is liable to expose the recipient of this information to immediate death. Now, Dugan, you read it from there on. Come on, come on, this is no time for nonsense. Read it, Clancy. Feeling that this confession may, in some measure, right the wrong I have done, I... Hey! Turn up those lights! What's the matter with those lights? Dugan! Clancy! Turn up those lights! Hey, what's happened here? Now we'll continue. Who got that letter? Who took it? What? Somebody took the letter. Come on, who's got it? Hand it over. 
Nobody leaves this room, Dugan. Do you get that? Let them try it. Quiet, everybody. Listen. I'm going to give an order. Quiet. He's going to give an order. And I don't want no squawks. Everybody in this room has got to be certain. You can't do he a thing like that. He said no squawks. And I'm going to start with you. And if I ain't asking too much, I'd like to finish him. Well, don't you think it would be better if the ladies left the room while we're being searched? Well, they can stay if they want to. But when we get through with you, you ain't going to have no more clothes on than Gandy. Right. Hey, you two, scram out in the hall till I send for you. Don't try to get away. Now, come on. Let's have your trinkets. Come on. Why search me? Why should I want to steal that confession or whatever it is? If you're not concealing anything, there's nothing to be afraid of. That's right. Search him. I'll take care of this bird. Oh! Now we're getting somewhere. I gave him the gun, Mr. Clancy, last night. Oh. This is such a silly waste of time. My father lying in there. Mr. Drake's life, perhaps all our lives, in danger. I don't understand you, Mrs. Quincy. You mean Neil, Mr. Broderick? Well, what about him? What are you trying to say? Well, we pressed them all and no luck. What do you suggest? We've got to get to the bottom of this thing. Oh, Dogan. Bring those women in here. All right, girls. Come on in. You. What do you know about all this? Never mind, never mind. How about you, young lady? What was you doing at that light switch? I was turning on the lights. Who turned them off? Answer that one. I'm sorry, Mr. Clancy. I'd like to help you, but I can't. Maybe we'd better search them both. Yeah, maybe. You take Mrs. Quince. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Listen, all you folks. I know that letter's in this room, and I know one of you got it. And I want it. Now, I'm going to give you just 30 seconds to hand it over. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. All right. All right. You brought it on yourself. Now I'm going to get real tough. That ought to be an interesting spectacle. I'm going to lock every one of you in your room for the rest of the night. And in the morning, I and Dugan are coming down and tear this room wide open. Why wait till tomorrow? Let's tear it now. Shut up! I got a couple of ideas of my own. Well, folks, I can't do anything. I'll drive back to town and make arrangements to move the body. That's a very good idea. And you might bring the police back with you. Hi. What do you think we are? Oh, don't make us guess. Tell us. Well, I'll see you later, folks. I suppose someone will be up when I get back. Uh, <laughs> and how? Mm. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, after all, that's not a bad idea. I'm pretty tired after that trip, and I'm sure you must be too. I am. As soon as we get all these people under lock and key, Mr. Drake, we're going to park ourselves outside your bedroom door to make sure nothing happens to you. Thank you, Mr. Clancy. Am I to understand that we're under arrest? No. We're just going to see that if you walk in your sleep, you don't walk too far. Now, upstairs. Everybody, upstairs. Yeah, come, come on. on. You two, upstairs. Come on, come on. Get going. Good night, Mr. Clancy. Good night. Well, Mr. Drake, 
I guess you're safe from everything in here. Yes, except suffocation. Well, look, in case that happens, be sure and call us. Good night. Good night, Mr. Denzi. Cut that out, Henderson. You can't lock me in here. What is this, jail? Quiet in there, or I'll give you something to kick about. Hey, Dugan, where are you? I'm in here. Oh. You know, this is all a lot of nonsense, boys. You're taking an awful lot on yourselves. What's the matter now? Oh, he's just blowing off again. Oh, am I? Well, you eggs better watch out for the steam. Now, don't lose your temper, Dugan. No, no, go on. That's that. Are you all right, Martha? Yes, thank you. Good night, Mr. Clancy. Good night. Mr. Drake, are you there? Yes, of course I'm here. Please, Bear. There's something I want to say, Mr. Tensley. Open this door, please. Mr. Tensley, I hope the situation is clear to you. As you know, the Black Ace threatened me, but killed Mr. Winters by mistake. You may be quite sure, Mr. Tensley, that he's still after me. Tonight, an attempt will be made on my life. I don't want you to neglect the others, but I want to make sure that one of you is constantly on guard at this door. You can gamble on that, Mr. Drake. Unfortunately, it appears we can expect no cooperation from Mr. Henderson or Mr. Brother. No, but you can expect most anything else from them. Don't worry, Mr. Drake. We got our eye on everybody. Oh, by the way, how about this Poppy guy? Poppy, thoroughly reliable. Been with me for years. No, I mean a thing. Of course, it's our business to suspect everybody. We was on a case once where a guy had a chink butler for 12 years and he went phony. You see, it was like this. This guy's boss gets back from Europe with a load of cracked ice. We dope this egg as 50 cards in the deck, but I see him sneak a Benny in the dicer, so I know he's gonna hightail it. We're wise this guy's a jungle stiff, but we know he's gotta dig somewhere. Quiet. Good night, gentlemen. Well, all's quiet on the Potomac. Yeah, but we ain't on the Potomac.
You better go down and see who that is. I gotta guard this Drake guy. I don't mind guarding him if you want to go down. We'll both go down. Let him guard himself for a while. Well, what are you waiting for? No, no. It's your turn this time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Open the door. Good evening. Who are you? You sent for me. I'm the coroner. No, no. We don't want any more examinations tonight. How many coroners are there? There's only one. We just had a coroner. You gentlemen must have been deceived. I'm the coroner. What do you make of that, Dugan? We gotta get to the bottom of this thing. I thought that first guy was too funny to be a coroner. That's why I thought he was the coroner. That's what you call inverse ratio cination. Clancy, you feel all right? No, I don't. The black ace walks in the front door, shakes hands with it, pats us on the back, steals the letter and walks out again. That kind of stuff burns me up. Ah, uh, don't let it get you down. Maybe you'll come back. Huh? doing here? I want that letter. Why? Why do you come to me? Because you took it. Neil, what do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. You were afraid your father was about to implicate himself. You were trying to save him. Isn't that true? Yes. Tell me what you did with it. I hid it. Where? I won't tell you. You've got to tell me. Don't you want us to know who the Black Ace is? Yes. Then tell me. I put it on the mantel in the living room. We'd better get it. Good. Oh. The 
black ace. Well, well. What's popping off here? Now you found it, eh? Nothing but blank paper. Where's that confession? It's been stolen. Yeah, I know it has. Look what we found. Sure, you put it there. Oh. You know, I'm not so dumb. I knew if I locked all these people up that one of them would make a break and come back after that confession. Clancy, you got a marvelous mind. You're uncanny. Oh, it's nothing at all, Dugan. Well, Broderick, that washes you up. You're coming back to Chicago with us. I've had nothing to do with this, I tell you. Hey, this is Clancy you're talking to. Maybe we ought to let Drake in on this. Sure, I'll go upstairs and get him out of bed. How about the sweethearts on parade? We're going to separate them two. You keep your eye on her. She knows the answer to a lot of riddles. Roderick, you come with me. I'm going to stay right here and look after Miss Winters. She'd be as safe with me as she'd be with her own mother. Yeah. Please don't go. Never mind a conversation. Sit on that couch till we come back. You with me. Now listen to me, Dugan. If anything happens to Miss Winters, I'm coming back here and wrap a table around your head. Yeah? See this? So what? Tell him, Clancy. Now, don't lose your temper, Dugan. Come on, wise guy. Get going. Don't worry. Well, you might as well take it easy, Miss Winters. Everything's in the bag. You know, Miss Winters, life's a funny thing. Yesterday I'm in Shy, tonight I'm down south. You know, I always thought the south was full of mammies and vodio dough. Before I go back, I'd like to lamp one of them mammies. You know, the kind that Al Jolson's always begging to come back to. They must have something on the ball. Take you, for instance. Now, you're a nice gal. Good looker, nice shape. Get your fall for a heel like this, Broderick. Please, Mr. Dugan. Well, uh, women are a funny race. You find them, fall for them, then you have to marry them to get rid of them. Mr. Drake, what is it now? We just found a black ace. What? Unlock the door. What's this you found? The black ace. It's him. We found him and Miss Winters downstairs digging up that confession from where they'd hid it. Now listen to me for a minute, Mr. Drake. This, this half-wit here, this mental mission... Now, please, please, Mr. Broderick, you were not brought here as an alienist. Where is this confession? Who had it? Well, that's just it, sir. It's gone. And there's a way to make you tell where. What has Martha got to do with all this? Maybe you'd better come downstairs and help us find out. Oh, well, I hope you know what you're doing. I'm sure I don't. What is this? Oh, what? It sounded like a groan. It came from there. Unlock the door. Looks like he got it the same way Winters did. Of course. We've got to have help out here. You can't cope with this situation, Clancy. You're right. The police will be here any moment. I asked the coroner to bring them back with him. I think it'll be a good idea if we search the room. Maybe we'd find the knife. Wait a minute, Clancy. That door was locked, wasn't it? Sure. I locked it. The key's in the door now. Has anybody else got a key? Maybe I'd better search you. Well, what for? I was downstairs when this happened. How do you know when it happened? All right, Mr. Clancy. Go ahead and search me. What's that? Well, even you ought to know that. That's a key. What key? May I see it? Hmm. 
Looks like a skeleton key. Maybe that's the key you got out of your room with. And into her room with. And into this room with. Oh, so Mr. Broderick has been getting into rooms, has he? Into them and out of them. You know, this ain't a bad joint. It gives me an idea. Someday I'm gonna get a run-down plantation on the Mississippi and just run down with it. You know, it does a guy good to sort of, you know, get close to nature. There's an awful lot of nature around this joint. When they get through straightened out of the Depression, the Democrats ought to start straightening out the women. They're perfectly at home swimming channels, perfectly at home flying across the ocean, perfectly at home wearing pants. In fact, they're perfectly at home anyway, but in the home. You can say what you please, women's place is in the house. Don't you think so? I say, women's place is in the house. Ain't that right? Hey! me from sucking you in the jaw. Search the grounds. There's no time to lose. Get some lanterns. Never mind lanterns. I'm going now. You'll uh, stay right where you are. I've had enough of you. Quiet or I'll drop a slug into you. You're making no getaway. I'll get to you before the night's over. And you too. You got a gun, Mr. Drake? Mr. Broderick has my gun. Fine. Me and Dogan are going to search the ground. You keep an eye on this guy. I'll take care of Mr. Broderick. Come on, Dogan. Mrs. Quincy, what am I doing here? What are you doing here? Never mind, Pompey. I can manage the gentleman. Close that door. Now, Mr. Broderick, what have you done with Miss Winters? She's being taken care of. Oh, very well, if you don't care to talk. Pompey, do as I told you. Broderick, there's an accomplice working with you on the outside. Why not be easy with yourself and tell me who it is? I don't know what you're talking about. I must admit you're a very clever man. Thank you. It's been very interesting watching your maneuvers, your accidental meeting with Miss Winters, your tricking her into bringing you to me in the guise of a novelist seeking material, your disposal of her father in your usual manner when he threatened to interfere with your plans, your actions in this house, your manipulation of skeleton keys, your removal of Henderson. All these events form the structure of a very conclusive case against you. Mm. You, uh, you seem to take plenty of interest in building a case against me, Mr. Drake. Naturally, having succeeded in capturing you, there had to be evidence to convict you. <laughs> but doesn't it strike you that the most important evidence has yet to be found? Every one of these murders was committed with a very thin, sharp instrument. <laughs> Where is it? I imagine you'll be obliging enough to reveal that when properly oh, coached by the police. What are you doing with that lighter? Oh, yeah. Was that you calling me a minute ago? I'm surprised that it works. Come over to this side of the room. Now, Mr. Broderick, I'll trouble you for that confession. What confession? The one that was found on the body of Winters. The one you took from the mantelpiece. Oh, that letter. 
I'm going to save it. I haven't got it. Just why are you so anxious to obtain this letter, Mr. Drake? Because it contains the name of the Black Ace. And I want it. Good work, Simons. What does this mean? Did you take care of Miss Winters? Everything's okay. Oh, uh, Mr. Drake, I want you to meet Jerry Simons of the Bureau of Criminal Investigation. <laughs> you two boys ought to be great pals. I believe this is the letter that you had such difficulty in finding. <laughs> it's odd, isn't it, how these lost articles will bob up in the most peculiar places. Here's something else that will amaze you. This mentions you as the Black Ace. Oh, Winters was mad, absolutely mad. Well, you're not going to be so pleased yourself when they put that rope around your neck. Surely you haven't the audacity to accuse That's exactly me? exactly what I'm doing. I've suspected you for some time. After Marsden's death, things began to happen a little too fast. Winters could stand for a lot of things, but he couldn't go for murder. He was weakening, so you disposed of him. Henderson knew plenty, too. He threatened you, didn't he? Oh, your cleverness intrigues me, Mr. Broderick. Perhaps you can tell me how I committed these murders. Yes, yes, I think I can. Amazing. Please do. And up your hand. Excellent, Pompey. Now, Mr. Broderick, I'll trouble you for that confession. Mr. Broderick, as far as I'm concerned, you've written your last chapter. Pompey, both barrels loaded, I presume? Yes, sir. Very well. You favor Mr. Simons first. I want Mr. Broderick to have a very definite idea of what's going to happen to him. Are you all right, Simons? Yeah. Well, that's the last chapter for him. Open the door! What's going on here? What's the idea? What's going on here? Looks like there's been a fight. There's the Black Ace, boys. You'll find the confession in his pocket. So, that's the guy, huh? And there's the instrument he used for all his killings. Roderick, you're all right. You're uncanny. You know, we suspected this guy right along. We never thought you had anything to do with it. Thanks. Well, Duggan, what do you think about it? I knew we'd get to the bottom of this thing. Ah!